Hey everyone, it's James from the Fit RV. Now today I'm going to be adding some soundproofing and insulation to the doors on our Travato. The Travato is based on the Dodge Ram Promaster. And the first step in doing that is to remove the door trim panels. And so I'm going to show you how to do that in this short video. This should be applicable not just to a Travato, but to any Promaster based RV or even just a regular Dodge Ram Promaster. I'm going to show you how to take this off. It's not that difficult. And then uh, I'll do the rest of the project. But before we do that, let's go into the shop and I'm going to show you the tools we're going to need. First thing, probably the most important and the oddest tool, is you're going to need a Torx T27, not 25, not 30, 27. You're going to need either a screwdriver or I'm going to be using this, uh, this bit in my driver, Torx T27. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver for some things, and then you'll need a variety of prying instruments. There are some little clips in there that, uh, that need to be pried out. So I have a very tiny flathead screwdriver, a set of body work pry bars that I got from Harbor Freight Tools. I have this little tool. This is a, I got this from a car stereo installer. It's called a bone tool. I think it might actually be made out of bone, which is kind of creepy and cool at the same time. Um, and then a scraping implement. This is a plastic scraper um, because there is some adhesive inside the door that you'll want to remove. And then I have this magnetic parts tray just so I don't lose any screws. So that's what we're going to need. Let's bring this outside and get to work. Okay, so we're going to first start with the real easy and obvious stuff. There are four T27 bolts holding on this bottom pocket. We're going to take those off. All right, there are four of those. That comes off pretty easy. Just set that aside. Now there are a couple, there's one more up top here, so let's get that one next. Okay, there are some Phillips head screws under here. I'm going to remove those next. Okay, this next one's pretty tricky. There's actually a screw behind this little plastic plug here. You're gonna need something pretty tiny to pry that out. I have this tiny screwdriver. There we go. And it's just a Phillips head screw in there. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is there are some clips that are holding this on the bottom part of it. There are actually still some more screws in the top. Um, but there are clips here, so get a little pry bar or something. There's a clip right about here. There we go. And then just start working your way around the door and you'll find the clips. So while you're working your way around removing clips, you may as well pop off this uh, speaker grill. comes off without too much difficulty. There we go. Okay, next we're gonna remove the speaker. So this is just held in place, in my case, with some Phillips head screws. I do not have the factory speakers. I've got an upgraded JBL speaker, but the factory speakers are held in in the same way. You can see the screws for those here. So I'm just gonna remove these. Okay, when you remove the last screw, your speaker may want to come out on its own. That's fine. You do need to notice this little relief here in the trim, it's right up there. That's where you're gonna to wanna to route the wires when you go to put your speaker back in. There's this relief cutout in the, uh, in the trim panel there. That's where the wires go through. The speaker should just come right out. And there's a clip there. I'll have to remove that. Let me put this stuff down. There we go. Okay, so at this point, it's getting pretty loose, but there's still some screws up in here holding this thing in. To get to those screws, you have to start removing this. So we have to remove this uh, little door lock and uh, window trim panel. There should be a metal clip on the bottom of this one that we'll want to save. It'll probably fall loose inside the door. There we go. Now this is gonna have some more wires attached to it, considerably more here than on the uh, passenger side. So we're gonna need to disconnect these. And once you've removed that, you'll see that there's another T27 bolt in here that we can remove. I 
All right. Okay, so next we need to remove the door lock mechanism or the door handle. The easiest way I found to do that, you kind of open up the door a little bit and then you put this pry tool behind the door and then you pry this trim piece out. Come on, there we go. Come on out. There we go. And once you do that, you'll see right in there, there's two more bolts. We remove those and we can remove the door. Okay, and with that, this should come off. Now, the one thing you may want to do is now that you've got the door clear, is to remove the door lock so that you don't have to try to fiddle it through there. Easiest way to do that is you remove this uh, blue cable from the retaining clip here. And then rotate and the pin pops right out of that. Door lock off. And here we go, moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Ta-da. Next thing we want to remove this little panel on the bottom. This has just got some more clips in it that's pretty easy to remove. And there we go. And the final step is this guy here. Now this is like a piece of weatherproofing kind of stuff. It's actually held on here with this sticky black stuff, which those of you that have RVs is very similar to the butyl tape that you would use like to seal up a roof vent or something like that. The easiest way I found to do that is to just get a little bit started and then kind of use a scraping tool and just gently peel it all away. I've got a tear in the door there, look at that. I didn't do that, somebody else did that. All right, so let's get to work on that. And there we go. 10 minutes later, we have access to the inside of the door. Now, a couple notes about working inside the door here on the ProMaster. The first is there are weep holes in the very bottom to let any moisture that gets in the door get out. Whatever you do, if you're adding insulation, whatever, don't cover up the weep holes. That would be bad. The second obvious thing is to keep clear of the window tracks. The window is going to come down. It actually comes down pretty far. So you're going to want to make sure you don't do anything to impede the travel of the window. There are a bunch of mechanical things on the back side of this yellow panel here. Probably kind of stay away from them. On the passenger side, I actually used that same piece of uh, material to go back on here. I didn't have to add any more adhesive. It was still plenty sticky. And uh, to reassemble the door is just the reverse of what you just saw. So now I'm going to get to work. I'm going to add some sound deadening and insulation. And uh, that does it for this video. See you later. Bye.